So I want to address something uh, that, that I'm always actually a little bit sheepish about because people just blanch when you tell them, like, no, you can't do that. Um, <clears throat> because they just got up the phone with a guy, really cool guy, and uh, he actually looks after this, this couple's dog uh, frequently. I don't know if it's like their assistant or whatever, but he was explaining the situation to me, and there was a, there was a dog, he's a, he's a pit roddy mix, and he's been getting into fights, right? But guess where he's been getting into fights? It's the dog run, all right? And the guy explained to me, um, it's usually in relation to a ball or something. He doesn't like huskies, I guess. So I had asked, well, was, how is he on leash? And they were, he was like, well, the dog work has been saying he's been getting more and more tense. So I, look, again, like I said, I'm sheepish about explaining this to people when I usually try to bring them along slowly because it just seems anathema to them. Um, but this is a very common story, okay? So three of the most common causes of dog aggression. Dog parks, doggy daycare, and on-leash dog introductions. And you can't do any of them. <laughs> Sorry. You know, so, and people are like, what the fuck? What? And it's not really their fault. Uh, although I do think the on-leash introductions, at least if you don't ask, you should probably know better, but I'm not gonna get into. I'm not gonna get on my uh, my uh, pissy band, my pissy high horse. So here's a problem, right? Dog parks are full of uh, bad dogs and worse owners, or there's a ton of them there. Okay, people also don't know how to really read body, dog body language, understand. Okay, what's what's cool, what isn't? When is a dog about to lose his temper? You know. And they don't really get dogs like, oh, that's playful. Like, well, maybe to what's playful to one dog type of dog breed is disrespect to another. So the working line German Shepherd isn't going to find the golden doodle shit funny because the golden doodle is neotenized. It's basically stuck in a permanent adolescence. So it's like if, you know, I was at, you know, walking by playground, some kid came up to me and he was just fucking around. It was getting all up in my shit, getting aggressive about it. All right, dude. All right. All right. But if he kept doing it, I might get irritated, you know. Um, I wouldn't punch him unless he was at least 14, though, just because I'm a good person. But <clears throat> the... Uh, that's basically what's going on. There's all kinds of bad shit going on in dog parks. And... and I don't like telling people that because it's like near and dear to their heart. And I think a big part of the reason for that, uh, I don't want to say it's necessarily a lazy way to get your dog out. I mean, maybe it kind of is, but I think it's intellectually lazy though. Okay. So what you want to do is get the dog off leash train, take him to a park. Technically illegal in New York. Fuck it. I do it all the time. Never got a ticket. Okay. Take the dog, throw the Throw the ball at the dog, all right? Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do with your dog and not have them play with strange dogs. Dogs, it depends on the breed and the individual dog a lot, but for them to interact with strange dogs isn't a fully natural behavior with the majority of them. Now, you, again, you may have a sporting type breed that was bred for juvenile traits and docility. Not a problem for you, but... I have to give a lot of negative information in my job, so if I talk to someone who's you know, Pitbull Roddy is hit, is reaching sexual maturity and all of a sudden they're getting into fights at doggy daycare. And they're like, well, we got to fix this. And my answer has to be, well, we can't. Dog, he can't do that. You know, that's just not, that's not going to be part of his program. And quite frankly, I don't think it should be part of any dog's program. Doggy daycare is worse than a dog park because you're not there and the dog can't leave. And... Look, animal people, myself included, are freaks. I think I'm, I'm, I can walk amongst the normal folk sometimes. But I've been to doggy daycares before, and I've seen the motherfuckers who work there. They're like almost homeless. Like, yeah, man, you know, like, I like, they're just fucking freaks a lot. You know, I'm sure they're very sweet, normal, whatever. There's always an exception to the rule, but they don't know shit about dogs. And there is not proper supervision. It's fur baby bullshit. They just want to appease the owners. But look, they're all playing. It's a nightmare. 
and your dog can't leave. It's not a good place for a dog to be. I get it. And I'm often conflicted about this because I don't think dogs should be alone. Isolation is not natural to the species, which is why I always tell people they want to punch me in the face. I'm like, let's get this guy under control. And as long as he's not a dog assassin, let's try to get a second dog, maybe six to 18 months down the line, two years down the line. So he can start to develop a, you know, a pack and not have to be alone anymore. Uh, that's a better solution. Working the dog, sleeping less, working more with your dog, you know, taking him out in the morning, throwing him a ball for 20, 30 minutes, you know, training him. So he's tired, be able to deal with the, um, separation a little better. So a lot of stuff you can do. Uh, socialization entails impartiality, neutrality toward strange dogs and really strange people and good relations with uh, extended family and pack members. So, you know, your parents' dog, your, you know, your girlfriend's dog, whatever. Your dog has to be cool with those dogs that are in his life and the dogs he lives with. The rest of them, they don't exist. It's like, if he doesn't get excited every time he sees a tree, it should be a non-event when he passes a dog on the street. And whether it's due to a bad experience or a dog park or just because the dog is now being conditioned to get excited every time. He walks by the dog. It's like, whoa, it's party time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you combine that restraint plus that high level of arousal and it equals leash reactivity. That's just the way their brains function. If they get frustrated. It's called barrier frustration is the, the technical name for it. So you're, it's like holding back a drunk in a fight. Or a, not that. It's like holding back a drunk who's being rude and callous. He's like, hey, hey, what's that? How is it? Ah! They just it flips the fuck out, you know. Um, they're not that emotionally sophisticated, so it, it could be one of those two things. It could be a mixture of both. And you got to understand, you put your dog at risk. Uh, I, this used to sound extreme to me. This stuff about dog parks, even dog on dog on leash introductions. Okay, which I don't want to get too into because I'll start to sound real shitty. Uh but I almost lost Elvis at Dog Park. Dog locked on home for at least two minutes. One of the, I mean, I still get like sweaty palms thinking about it. That shit can happen. It was for no reason. The dog was nuts. So understand that you're putting your dog at risk, whether you realize it or not. And, and I'm not making that up. I mean, this is a true story. It happens with a fair amount of frequency, okay? I mean, the, the dog fights happen all the time at the fucking dog park. Why would you want to go there? Think about it for a second, you know? The last one, on-leash introductions. Dogs are being introduced. People do it. If you're going to do it, let them sniff their behinds. But the problem is, is again, there's restraint. They don't know each other. If they like each other, maybe they start to play. Now the leashes are fucking tangled. And play can quickly turn to aggression a lot of times. Because, again, they're strangers, Okay. Someone might take something personally that maybe you wouldn't take from, you know, take personally from a dog you know as well. There's a lot, but people always introduce them nose to nose, eyeball to eyeball. Eye contact is super, super, super intense to dogs, even more so with dogs than humans. It's They stare each other down right before they fight. Just about always. Uh, so... That's what you're setting the dog up for. I mean, you're sending signals at the dog like this is a confrontation. Again, golden doodle, not going to be an issue. Okay, but that's not the standard by which you should be judging all dogs. Dogs that have been historically bred for hunting, guarding, you know, fighting, warfare, whatever, work. Okay, the, these dogs are, are typically more serious, um, less juvenile. And they're not, they're going to interpret social situations differently than a hyper, a hyper docile breed, cockapoo, whatever. Okay. And you got to understand dogs are very from breed to breed and, uh, that's okay. I mean, well, why is that a problem? It's just aggression. Any form of aggression is so hyper stigmatized that we, no one wants to even try to understand it, even though it's a perfectly natural instinct in canines. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to combat that ignorance, so that's why I put this video out. 
one last thing. So this is, I may just send this to people from now on before I work with them. Those three things, if that is hard for you to digest, what I just described. First of all, pay attention to the logic of what I'm saying. Um, and and try to deconstruct it. Does it and think about it? Does that make sense? And I want you to understand that there are social conventions when it, surrounding dogs, and it's mostly due to I call it petco culture, fur baby culture, but it's a lot of it is predicated upon marketing money. But you have been fed disinformation about dogs, and it seeped into our general culture. And now we have these expectations we impose on our dogs that are all wrong. And it's not in line with their nature, and it's not safe, it's not healthy. And you've got to understand that you have a set of biases internalized because of that, that you have to fight an uphill battle against now, or I do. Um, and if I sound curmudgeonly, I, I apologize. It's not, and I'm not judging, all right? If you're working with me, I, we're just, this is just, I'm just giving you information. And unfortunately, a decent, portion of it will be negative you know a lot of thou shall not um and it's not it's not really your fault you just you didn't know but you got to listen to me you got to trust me um because there are a lot of there's probably a lot of things that you're doing that are asked backwards and you didn't know any better just like the dog doesn't know any better so and i wouldn't tell you things that i know are difficult for people to swallow and accept if I wasn't absolutely certain that, uh, you know, I was correct. Um, that was necessary to tell people not to do that stuff. So please keep that in mind and, and just, just trust me uh, if we work together. And if you see this video, keep an open mind. I mean, I don't, I, I've just been seeing this a lot with clients lately. They have a really hard time accepting the thing about dog parks in particular. And... You know, I would tell people, look, try to examine your own underlying motivations behind going to a dog park. You want to get the dog exercise. It's an easy way to do it. You know, there's, there's a much more effective way to do it that might be a little bit more labor intensive, might get a little bit more tired, but you get to avoid all those shitty people too, because most of those people are not cool. Sometimes you make buddies there, right? But most of the time, you know, people on their cell phones, not watching their dog. They're not cool. Uh, okay, so that's it. Um, and and this, is, this is a big challenge for me. So, And I get sheepish about it. So there it is, full disclosure. You can't do those three things. It's not good for the dog. And it's a very, if not the most common cause of dog aggression, one of them. You know, those three put together. Really, really bad.